Welcome to part one of the FormZ Pro introduction and interface tour. Let's get started. Let's get you introduced to FormZ 10 Pro. Once you have the application installed, you're going to have this folder within your applications folder on your computer. Inside the FormZ 10 folder, we have several subfolders. We have the main program here in the top folder, and then we have several subfolders for additional items that you may or may not use depending on how deep you get into the program. But this is where components are stored. This is where hatch patterns are stored, materials, etc. If we open those up, you can see that there's several subfolders in many of those as well. So everything Form Z is going to be inside this folder. We're focusing on the main first folder here, so let's double click into there, and you can see that there are several different Form Z applications inside of here. The first one is the main Form Z modeling application. We also have the 2D drafting and layout application. We have the Form Z imager, which is a batch rendering application. And then we have the render server and render client. So if you have multiple computers on a network, you can distribute the power of that rendering amongst multiple computers. And one can be the server and then multiple can be the clients. Inside this folder, there are a few other subfolders as well. And these all have to do explicitly with this version of Form Z that you're in. So there's a plugins folder. If we go into that one, you can see that there are some additional plugins for rendering packages, um, some extra tools. You can see there's a V-Ray folder in here. There's a 3D connection if you are using a space explorer like I am. And we also have scripts. And there's Python scripts stored inside this scripts folder. And there is a support folder. Let's take a look at the installation on the Windows side. And it's pretty much identical to what we just saw on the Mac side. We have a file path of the C drive program files form Z10. And inside that, we have the Form Z10 Pro folder, along with the additional support folders for materials and textures and components and things like that. We're going to go ahead and double click into the Form Z10 Pro folder. And we see, again, a very similar folder structure to what we just saw on the Mac. We have the main Form Z Pro application. We have the imager for batch rendering. We have the draft layout program for 2D. And then we have the render client and server for managing a render farm if you have multiple machines to do renderings. There's also a few additional DLLs specific for the Windows installation, but other than that, it's very similar. Let's double click on the Form Z application and launch it. When you launch Form Z, you get this splash screen, and within this splash screen, there are several options. You can open a recent file, of, of which a list will be displayed here on the right. You can open files that are not recent by clicking the Open button. You can import other three-dimensional and two-dimensional geometry files and drawings, or you could create a new project. And the final thing worth mentioning here is that there is a button to go to some self-guided tutorials online. So what we're going to do is click New Project and take a look at this as if we were starting from scratch. When you open up Form Z for the first time, you'll see this interface. This view of your model here is called the modeling window. And inside the modeling window, we have an X, a Y, and a Z axis. And we have what Form Z calls a reference plane. Some other programs call this a construction plane. Some call it a C plane. And it displays the grid on that. And what I'm going to do here is just draw a quick little cube just to orient us in 3D space. So if I use my navigation tools to orbit around this, I'm going to use my middle mouse button by holding that down, and I can orbit around my model. And if I add the shift key to that, I can pan that back and forth. Now, if you ever get lost, if you get too far zoomed in or you get too far zoomed out and you just can't find where you are anymore, you can always go to the View pull-down menu and go to Home. And this is a great keyboard shortcut to memorize just in case you ever get lost in Form Z, but just rest assured that you can always get back to the home view that you first saw when you opened up the application by pulling down this view menu and choosing the home option. Besides the main modeling window, there are a lot of other palettes and toolbars to look at, so let's just start at the top. At the very top of the screen, we have the pull-down menus, and most commands can be found inside of these, and a lot of them are duplicated in the toolbars themselves as well. 
These are very good to get familiar with, and you'll notice that these categories actually make a lot of sense when we're talking about things that have to do with the view, when we're talking about things that have to do with the modeling windows, when we're thinking about the different display types that we might be looking at, the ways we want to view our model. And so you will want to take a little bit of time to go through the pull down menus and see what's in there. We'll be getting into many of the details of these throughout this video series. Right below that, we have the main window where we can drag the entire application around on the screen. You're used to that. And here in the top left corner, we have what FormZ refers to as the prompts palette. If you're not familiar with CAD packages and 3D modeling programs, I like to think of this prompts palette as where the conversation with the program occurs. If you think of an application like Microsoft PowerPoint, you know, a lot of times you'll click on a tool. For example, you might want to put a circle on the screen. And when you choose that tool, the circle will just show up on the screen. Well, in Form Z and any other CAD program, it's not really like that. You'll notice when you choose a tool, Form Z basically wants to have a conversation with you, and you're going to have to have a little bit of back and forth as you figure this out. So this is a palette that you'll want to pay attention to because until you get used to working in Form Z, this is a great place to find out a hint about what's going to happen next or what the program is expecting from you. Next to the prompts palette along the top here, we have the basic file operations like open, save, close, load, undo, redo, copy, paste, things like that. Directly adjacent to that in the top row, we have different things that have to do with our axes. And you can see I can click on that and turn the axes display visibility on and off here in the main modeling window. And I can turn on and off the reference planes visibility here in the main modeling window. The next section here are display types. And this changes how the model is displayed to you while you're working. And it is often very valuable to switch between these different display types depending on what you need to do. Sometimes you want to see through to the backside of the object. So you might want to go into what's called wireframe mode. Then we have one called shaded work display. This is the main shaded display mode that you usually work in when you're working in Form Z. The next one here is called shaded full display mode. And what that means is we can actually see shadows. So I'm just gonna draw a base plane here so that we can see those shadows. And I'll spin this model around. And now our cube here is casting a shadow onto this other piece of geometry. So that's a little bit more realistic. And we'll get into how to change all of the settings inside of each one of these independently in a later video. The next display type is called hidden line display mode, which I think is self-explanatory. It hides the lines of the back faces and it gives us a nice clean outline representation of our model. And then we have one called Doodle, which is more sketchy. And then we have various rendering plugins like V-Ray and RenderZone. If I click on the render zone one here, we actually get a ray trace rendering of our model. So most of the time we're gonna be working in what's called shaded work display type. And if I spin my model around, you'll see it's very fast, it's very clean, it's shaded, but there's no shadows. One of the nice things is our objects have these heavier silhouettes around them, so they really pop out from one another and it's very easy to read. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to my home view just to set that back to how it would look when we open the program. All right, right below our display types, continuing in the top section of the main window, we have our views. So first we're in our 3D view, but then we have top, bottom, right, left, back, and front. A lot of these look the same because we have very simple geometry, but you can see how these can be very useful. And again, this history of these is coming from CAD programs where we're gonna need to look at different orthographic views of our model at different times. And sometimes we need to look at them all at the same time. So if I jump over here a little bit beyond some of these, we'll come back to these in a minute, you can actually switch to a multi-view, and that gives you a, a four-up display where you get a top, front, right, and perspective view all at the same time. And you can click into these various views, and you can zoom in and zoom out in each one independently, as well as build your model. So you could potentially start in one, switch to another, and build your model down there. And that's a nice little way to kind of see all of the different, you know, top view, 
front elevation, side elevation, and a perspective all at the same time. And if you click the multi-view button back off, you come back out in whichever one was active. So I'm going to click back on the perspective view and click off of the multi-view, and I jump back into perspective. And you can see, again, you can switch between those at full screen with these main buttons here in the second row on the left. Skipping over a couple, which we'll get into in later videos, we're going to look at our main navigation button. So the first one here is Orbit, otherwise known as Set View here inside of Form Z. So if I click on that, I can use my main left mouse button now to orbit. Again, there's another shortcut for that. And if I click onto another tool here, again, if I click and hold down on my middle mouse scroll wheel, I can orbit. So that's just a shortcut to that tool, and you can see that it highlights when I'm doing that. Then we have the swivel tool, which allows us to look as if we're in a stationary viewpoint, so we can look up and down and left and right. We have a walking tool. We get this little target in the middle, and if I click and drag up a little bit, we start walking toward our model. And if I click and drag down, we start walking away from our model. And the farther down I drag, the faster I walk just like the farther up I drag, the faster I walk forward. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut to go back to my home view, which on the Mac is Command-Shift-H, just to get me back to where I started. I'm going to skip over one and go to the hand tool, which you are probably familiar with from many different applications. It lets us pan around. So it's as if our camera position is staying in one place, but we want to swipe our model to the left or swipe our model to the right or up or down. Now with this tool, we don't get any closer to it. It just kind of keeps us equidistant away, but we can move it back and forth. And it's a, a very nice tool to have. Again, if we're using the middle mouse button to orbit, if we add the shift key to that, we get the shortcut to that tool. We also have some basic zoom tools. So if I click on the zoom tool and just click, you can see it it centers around wherever my mouse is. And again, you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to almost accomplish the same thing. It, it does zoom in and out on increments. We also have a zoom in by frame tool up here. And what I do with this one is I click and drag and it draws a rectangle on the screen that is proportional to my modeling window. And wherever I let go, it will zoom in to that level. I'm gonna hit Command Shift H to jump back out to home. We have a zoom in incrementally and we have zoom out incrementally and that's just based on the center of the screen. This next tool is really great. It's called Fit All and you can see the keyboard shortcut is Command F on the Mac. And what this allows you to do is kind of quickly see the extents of your model. So if I just zoom out and I draw some additional shapes out here and over here and in here, if I'm modeling something rather large and I'm, I'm zoomed in on this portion, but I don't see everything. As long as nothing is selected and I hit the fit all command, it will show me everything. If I have a few objects selected or just one object selected, the fit all will actually fit to that object or object. So if I fit to that one, if I zoom out, and maybe I select these objects and hit fit all, it will fit those into my view of the modeling window. It's a very useful tool to find your bearings if you're ever lost in a large model or sometimes a very small model. Thanks for going on part one of FormZ Pro's interface tour with me today. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell below to be notified when more videos are released. Talk to you soon.